I'm Stephen Foskett, organizer of the Tech Field Day events, and the what you're about to watch here is a presentation where uh, Rubrik is going to be presenting to a panel of delegates from around the world. These folks specialize in enterprise IT technology, and they are here to ask questions and discuss and learn about the technology. If you're interested in learning more about this event, you can find out by going to techfieldday.com. And if you enjoyed this video, you can find a lot more at youtube.com slash techfieldday, or just use the Google. Cool. I think, it was, I think it's neat the fact that you can keep using that same policy at any layer that you want. It just means there's not a lot of rework required. You're just doing something once and then re reusing it over and over. So in this case, uh, Kenny's covered a lot of interesting things in the Linux world. I wanted to deviate a little bit and show them in the SQL world. And we're going we're gonna to kill a database. Like, we're going to delete stuff. So I think that's fun. Uh, again, again, we'll see how it goes. So I have a, a physical Linux box. Or, I'm sorry, physical C. Oof. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> SQL on Linux. Good. Physical SQL server. This is actually running on a Nook, uh, just because I didn't want to buy a giant server just for a demo. So Nooks are handy. You can run SQL on a Nook. It's not that performant. Like, this is a demo. It's not a huge kind of thing. I'm not running in a. We support all those unavailability groups and any version of SQL past you know, 2008 and beyond, as well as Windows operating systems 2008 and beyond. People ask me why. I'm like, because everything before that is end of life. We don't support end of life stuff. Microsoft doesn't support it. We don't support it. Uh, although we, are, we, are, we are looking at 2005 just because it's like a we. Everyone's got dandelion SQL servers. Just to clarify, it's 2008 R2, I assume? All right, SQL 2008 and server 2008 R2, all 64-bit variants. Yeah. Good question. So I'll, I'll blow this up a little bit so it's easier to see. And uh, I am not a sports ball fan, but I took <laughs> some of the sports ball database here. And I made uh, an extra copy so that I don't blow up this person's demo. We got the NCAA TFD12 database. We have three Canadians here. Uh, they might not know what these other sports things are. <laughs> <laughs> and hockey's the only real game worth watching. Bat and so. curling. Cur okay, as long as there's cats. I've seen the little cats meme one where they're. Uh, anyways. Um, yeah. So we've got this database here. I've got an extra copy of it that I've been backing up and protecting. I'll, I'll switch out real quick just so you can see that. So we've got the NCAA. TFT12 database that's being protected using the Tech Field Day policy. Uh, if I wanted to, I could change that policy. You can see it's a couple days old because I just made it for this demonstration, uh, the purpose of this demonstration, right? So we're backing up every four hours. And let's uh, let's kill it, All right? So I'm going to go to because that's that's realistically what happens for most DBAs. They accidentally drop tables. I know it's not. <laughs> but we're just going the extreme route here. So let's just say you're like, man, I hate the world. Goodbye. Delete. It's gone. Uh, I know it's like super tiny because I'm running a weird resolution, but I'm just checking the closed connections box just in case someone has that open, uh, and then I want to uh, delete that particular database there. So, clicky, and refresh just to make sure it's gone, not there anymore. No cards up this sleeve. No cards up this sleeve. Right. So then, I'm just gonna. I, I've so basically the process to restore it is I first found the database that I want. You saw that I just typed in NCAA TFT12. It comes up. Select it, presents itself here. I'm a super admin. I've given myself God mode over the entire box. I'll use that account just to show that I have uh, the functionality here. So I may say, all right, I want to restore using one of my fulls, which are these little, the little circle blips, or full backups. And the kind of uh, progress bar looking thing, the, the stripe there is the um, incremental backups. Because I'm actually taking all the logs, fingerprinting them, asking rubric what it's missing, and sending over the deltas every five minutes and retaining those logs, I believe, uh, in this particular policy for seven days. Right? And you can change that on a per database uh, granularity if desired. Right? So I've got a couple different restore options here. I could just restore using a full, or I can say restore to a point in time. And what we'll do in either case is we'll restore the full database for you, as well as if you wanted an incremental restore, like you wanted, let's say, you know, somewhere in the middle between a couple fulls. We'll go ahead and uh, put the full, full over there, put all the logs over there, replay them for you, put the database back in place with all the security in the path that you choose. So with the restore, we'll just put it right back in place. If we find that you've done the execution of a restore and the database is already there, we'll go ahead and disconnect it and rehydrate the new one for you. Right? So we'll make sure that all that, kind of, all, it's all automated. There's, no, there's nothing you have to do. Uh, if you want to do an export, which I'll do with my uh, other account, which has less permissions, you can put that to any compatible server uh, that's running the SQL instances that would be supported by that database. Cool. So let's restore. 
I'll just pick. I'll pick a four, so we don't have to take uh, any can extra you, time there. Just for, from the log restore element, can you choose a point in time with which to tell it to replay the logs back to? Yeah, yeah. I could go. I could select. I could use the little slider bar from feeling saucy, or I could just literally type in here. You know, like I want from you know, 40, 56 a.m. Whatever. Yeah. We'll handle all of that process. We'll get it back in place. So I'm just going to choose a full because I'm lazy. We'll take the most recent full. So I select the database, pick a time, go to the little modal choice thing here, hit restore. It's going to say, are you sure? Are we sure? Is anyone not Do sure? it. Or forever hold your peace. <laughs> Do it. And then hit restore. Uh, we'll go back here, and I'll refresh, and it's restored. And that's it. So the interesting thing is, like, come on, that's pretty cool, right? You know, it's, it's, all, it's all back there. If I drill down and actually look at the uh, security model, uh, we went ahead and put all the users back as well. Right? So all the SIDs are put back in place. Uh, the restore option actually drops it exactly where it was, or it drops it, that's a bad word to use. Puts it back in place, the exact path that it originally was found, and you're done. Right? And it's really just a function of how big it is. You know, in this case, I think it's like 40 meg or 400 meg or something pretty tiny. Uh, but it would just be a function of how fast can we physically get the bits over as long as Ethan hasn't screwed up the network. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Questions, concerns? Pretty straightforward. I mean, how, how much are you gonna, are you gonna expand into doing the full Windows operating system on a physical appliance? Are you gonna expand the Linux supportability or compatibility? Yeah, it's all on the table, for okay. sure. I mean, those are things we're targeting uh, very much for next year to do, you know, bare metal windows, uh, more operating systems from a Linux perspective, more application-specific backups that aren't virtualized, more cloud targets, more hypervisors. You know, that's, that's really the goal. Because you saw the diagram with the modularity of the system. It's really just at the infinity layer and the Thor layer, talking to more cloud targets, more object stores, more hypervisors, and more applications. So 100% yes. Okay. That's that part. So my database is there. Yay. I mean, I, I guess I could... It's not a very interesting database, but I can go in there and uh, let's see what do we got. We got we got our database, our team database here. <coughs> so just to see that there's actually some data. I think it's like two rows in this database. It's just for fun. Yep, there they are. Super tiny. I know because I found the service book kind of makes the the, the presentation of some of this data kind of weird. But you just you can see there's some stuff there. There's two rows. Cool. Okay, so that's that. Now let's export using a less permissive account because you probably don't want to give your DBA's God mode over the whole box. Maybe you do, I don't know, maybe you trust them. Depends on how long the beard is. <laughs> that's, that's really what's, what's the matter. Yeah, <laughs> so uh, I'm going to switch accounts real quick. And I was kind of lazy, I just made a local account instead of, a, uh, instead of generating a uh, AD account, but it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna log as my TV12 like regular peon user. I log in as that guy. And this is where, you know, all of a sudden it's like, oh, the dashboard's gone. A lot of the controls are gone. This is the, uh, I think, two tiers down role that we have. It's more like an end user, where it's really just, here's a search bar, and here's all the data you have access to. And I can granularly assign access, or we can kind of sniff that out based on the permissions assigned on the objects. So in this case, I wanted to keep it really simple so there's not a lot of objects on the screen. I literally assigned one object, oops, equal server, assign one object to this user to control. So even if I went to search, remember Kenny was working with the var log and all that stuff, it doesn't come up. Right? I don't have permission to any of that. So this could be a tenant if I'm an MSP, it could be just internal tenants within my environment, or just, hey, I'm in IT for a while and I don't trust people with uh, anybody else's data. Uh, so I could find it using the search, there's my NCAA database, or I could actually drill into this Windows box, the instance, and I actually gave this user full access over the, this particular database server uh, so they have access carte blanche over the uh, P Windows 01 box, right? And I also said that the only thing I want this user to be able to do is export data, not restore it, right? So I can say, let's go into that TFT12 uh, data here, or NCAA TFT12 data. Um, notice that the manage buttons are gone. They can't modify the policy. They can't change the policy. They can't exclude or include data. But they have all the visibility into what's going on. They know it's a full recovery model, uh, model on the database, and they can see that we're taking backups uh, with logs attached to them. So I can pick any point in time and actually say, yeah, I want 8.59 in the morning because, I don't know, it's 9 o'clock is no fun. <laughs> Export. Now what we're going to do is uh, two different things. One, we're looking to see what the user has access to, but we're also looking to see, based on the information we have on this database, where can we really restore it? 
because if you back up on like 2012 or something, you can't restore it to 2005. You know? So anything forward looking from a SQL Server perspective, we can restore directly to it and we'll automatically filter that for you. In this case, the only option I have because, I gave, uh, because I'm using a very restricted user is that pwindows01 box. So it's gone ahead and said, well, this is the only place you could potentially put a database. So I'm gonna show you this host. Then I select the instance that I want in case it's Microsoft SQL Server. Uh, what do I want to call the database? I already have one called this, uh, NCAA TD, TFT12, so I'll make this one called Fun Times. Actually, let's make it Fun Times. That sounds even better. Fun Times. Uh, and I'll drop it into C, uh, C, CWAC TFT12, whatever. Put it right in the root. What, what happens if you try to restore over an existing database? It will tell you no, because that would be bad. Yeah, <laughs> unless you use the restore option, mm -hmm. and then it'll disconnect the database and restore because you told it to. Right. Otherwise, uh, what will happen in the little alert system, it'll say, not only could I not do it, but here's why, and here's what I found. You know, so if you were to, let's say you don't have write permissions in the file system, and you tell it to go to some folder that doesn't exist, it's going to say no. Um, if you don't have permission period, it could tell you no. If you're trying to restore over some existing file, to say, I found an existing file. So the modals, are, the, uh, the alerts are very granular and very expressive. Which I kind of like. So I said to go ahead and export into uh, the TFT folder there. Let me drop out a full screen here. I'm just trying to make it pretty for you. Uh, let's take a look and see if that's done. So let's go to databases. I don't want this query. And see if it's on there yet. Uh, so there's the Fun Times database. Do you, does anyone actually have a database called Fun Times? That'd be kind of cool. <laughs> I don't know, like, what's going on here? Uh, and we see I've pulled up C, the C colon WAC TFT12 folder, and it's because I didn't change the name of the MDF and LDF, they're just there as the original names in the path specified, so I could override that as well. And that's really it. It could be a reporting server. Uh, some customers like this because they actually just script it out to say every night grab the database backup, export it to this other location using this file name pattern, and then throw it away at the end of the day. And so you can automate that with really just you know, one call to the API. Well, that's pretty much it, right? So, what I like about the restore is like you really don't have to know anything about SQL instance or anything, or even the permissions, or anything. it's just like restore button, done, which I think is pretty snazzy to go with my title earlier. Uh, questions on that? Game changing. More. Game changing. <laughs> <laughs> you said it, not me, though, so it's okay, I think. I don't know. Do you agree that it's pretty easy? Is easy like a good thing, or? All right, cool. Other than that, I wanted to have a discussion offline, and we ordered some ice cream. So, ice cream. <laughs> Does anyone want ice cream? I know I don't. I, I don't have the power to take the stream offline. So I'll just say, thank you very much from a rubric perspective for coming in uh, and, and listening to the spiel. I think we've demonstrated real uh, running live systems functionality that is not vaporware. It exists. You've seen it all. We don't have any backup videos or we fly without a parachute, so hopefully it was was good time.